Hello and welcome back to the wild, which is kind of wild, but it's really rainy and miserable outside right now. So I've just taken this review inside so you can actually hear me and I'm not freezing. Yes. <laughs> so today's review is all about the Fujifilm 200mm f-stop 2, this telephoto prime lens, aka the great white sharp. <laughs> I nearly said sharp. Sharp, <laughs> because it is a beautiful sharp and amazing telephoto prime lens. And I have it in my hand and I have borrowed this from Fujifilm now for the last three weeks, three to four weeks, where I've taken it abroad, I've been photographing bears, I've been out in the forest doing pictures of like scenic stuff of my dog and some self-portrait work. So I have done a mixture of everything I can in the given time I've had it to give you an all-rounded user experience in the field with this lens. As always, this is not a technical review, that's not what I do, but what I do do, do do, <laughs> is to provide an all-rounded experience, as I've said, of using this telephoto lens or other equipment in the field as a photographer and actually using this in the scenarios I would use it in. So that's what I'm gonna talk about, how it performed, image quality, its performance and all that jazz. So let's crack on and get talking about this beautiful lens and why I fell in love with it. Okay, so the opening point I want to start with is about that aperture, that f-stop 2, because it's beautiful, it's stunning. Now, just to give you a bit of background, I am someone who has always loved prime lenses. When I started in photography, I shot for two years with just one prime lens, and I love them. I love the simplicity, the quality, the finesse sharpness but also the bokeh the dreamy ethereal vibe you can get from using a prime lens and having that wide aperture wide apertures are my favorite they are my favorite i can't help it <laughs> so when i saw this lens many years ago and i was just like oh i really want to try it just to see how a telephoto with that beautiful compression matched with a wide aperture would look and that fast aperture that wide aperture is the key and main selling point to this lens because yes there are other prime telephotos out there but not many of them i don't think don't hold me to this because i've not checked everything but not many of them have that f-stop too and when i was away in slovenia photographing brown bears in the wild sat in my hide hiding there being quiet and it was dark it was gloomy it was raining that f-stop too oh it was a dream it was beautiful it captured everything with low light and it did it in such a beautiful, magical way, and I was just blown away. If you want to see any of those pictures or more pictures from my trip to Slovenia, photographing brown bears, just head along onto my uh, playlist and you'll find them all on there because there's a lot, a lot in there and it's great. <laughs> and this leads me on to bokeh because I love bokeh. I'm a bokeh fan and you can achieve some stunning, stunning bokeh with the 200 millimeter. I was out one evening and I had the light shining through some, I think it was like mayflies or something just in the air. And it was creating these little dots of like um, bokeh just in the air on water droplets, on grass, just all these things. It looks beautiful, it's so nice and it's so good. And yeah, I love it, I absolutely love it. I also did a aperture test just to show you the difference between the apertures, where the sweet spot is, where your weak spot is. But even at f-stop 2, you'll see the clarity as you move along the whole scale up to f-stop 22. And it just gives you a good taste and feel and flavor for what each aperture is like and the clarity you get from them. So yeah, it's beautiful. Having that compression, that 305 millimeter equivalent effectively, along with an f-stop 2, it just gives such a beautiful finish to your images. And it just allows for more, I think that's a thing. And actually for me, having a telephoto that I know that go to f-stop 2, I take this around with me everywhere. This is something that you can use, not just for wildlife, you could use it for portrait, landscape, detail shots of like leaves, beautiful things. It's so versatile and open to so many different realms in your photography and yeah for me the f-stop 2 works brilliantly i think it's great and i loved it so 
yeah, all good. Okay, so let's talk about the build, the build of the 200 millimeter. And there's no two ways around it. This is a big lens. She is heavy, she is chunky, and she has a hell of a lot of glass, as you can see so much glass and that's what makes it heavy it is a heavy heavy lens but with that it is compact so i have to say i went away abroad this fitted well inside my camera bag not as easy with the lens hood attached to it because the lens hood is massive but <laughs> it still managed to fit which is in my low pro tactics that was fine and it feels secure in your hand i don't feel like i'm gonna drop it i feel like it's solid if i bumped it on things this is an older lens from fuji film which i'm borrowing it has got scuffs on it and it seems to have survived well from multiple people probably using it and knocking it around but it's a solid build it's really good so you get a lot for your money which is great one of the things i do absolutely love about this lens if i can find it it is made in japan and i think that's brilliant it's so nice to see equipment that's made from where it's originated from and i feel like it's an ode to fujifilm that they kind of developed their flagship telephoto prime lens in Japan itself, which I think is great. So it's made in Japan, which is amazing. And it is weather resistant, and you'd expect for a lens with this price tag, which we'll talk about later, that it should be weather resistant, because if it wasn't, I'd be very disappointed, but it is weather resistant, so that's fantastic. Just to quickly go over some of the features, you have just two dials, two dials, and I love this about primes. As I've mentioned, I adore primes, and the reason why is they are simplistic, they are just simple and i love that you've got your aperture dial here easily find exactly where you need to get everything and every aperture doesn't miss doesn't skip it's fine you can recognize each one you've got your focus ring again i've not had problems with it i think i read online some people found the focus ring a bit of a faff it's very sensitive is the only thing i would say i could be adjusting the focus and it will like be drastically changed. So that's, it's very sensitive. You also have some extra features on the side which you can customize yourself, your image stabilization, or your presets, your autofocus. You have an adjustable collar here where you can turn the lens itself when attached to the camera body to horizontal or vertical, which I think is great. The only thing that's different from the 150 to 600 millimeter is you cannot remove this foot mount, whereas you can on the 150, it has like a quick release button, which I really like, but you can't do it with this lens, which is fine. And you also have these buttons around the edges, which are custom buttons, which I don't actually use. I've not really felt the need to use them, so I haven't set them up. I can do everything fine just with my camera setup and these bits here, there's no problem. Another great thing about this lens is you have the capability to fit a filter if you want to, there is thread for it. And also with the lens hood when it's attached, it has a little window. If you're using a polarizing filter, you can easily just adjust it and move it around, which is wonderful as well. And with regards to the lens hood, as you can see, it is a chunky lens hood. She's a big, a big hood, but there's a reason for that hood to be so big. It's to protect any additional light hitting this in the wrong kind of way. But also the hood itself is felt lined and that's almost like to dull, not dull, but just to stop the light from bouncing around within the lens hood which worked really well. And I actually had the lens hood attached the whole time I was at the wildlife hides and doing other work. It worked great in the rain and good for harsh light as well. So the lens hood is great. Now the lens does come with a 1.4 teleconverter or 1.4 time teleconverter. I'll be honest, I haven't used this. And the main reason is because when you have the teleconverter attached, your base f-stop is 2.8. So that's a big jump from two to 2.8. For me personally, I really wanted to shoot at the f-stop too. That's really what I wanted to try it for. So it felt a bit counterproductive and intuitive to stick the teleconverter on. Also, I didn't actually need to, like I had lots of situations where everything was just fine at 200 mil. Obviously it's equivalent to 305 millimeter, but I just didn't feel the need to add the teleconverter. So that's everything for the bill. The main thing is she's heavy, but it's an expensive lens with a lot of glass and it's solid, it's sturdy, it's well built and reliable. It's gonna be heavy, all good. Okay, on to the next point, folks, which is image quality. Eric's favorite part, because he's made an appearance on this image quality, and this lens has performed fantastically, and I'll talk all more in just a second once I've put this little poppet down. You gonna let me put you down? <laughs> I can just see the top of Eric's head. <laughs> I really try to include him in my videos, but he's so short. It's really hard to like, when he sits up, he's like only up to like my, my rib cage and my, I'm, I'm taller. So 
Sorry, Eric. <laughs> okay, so image quality, where do I begin? Wow, <laughs> this, uh, yeah, this 200 mil has been fantastic for the image quality. I feel like it's um, so professional when I've taken pictures of it, seeing that lovely compression, that drawn in background, and also matched with the F-Stop 2 has been beautiful, as I've already discussed. And I think because of that, it leaves this lovely finesse and finish to your images. But along with that, you can shoot an F2 and still have crisp, clear, sharp images. And it's just beautiful. You have a depth to your image. Like every texture and every detail is captured and it looks real. I didn't notice any distortion edges. I didn't notice any vignetting. I hope I said that right. Or chromatic apparitions. I don't know if I've said that right, but I know what they are. <laughs> I didn't notice any of that. I just noticed clarity. And it's what you would expect and what I'd expect for a lens this expensive. At times I thought like my focus or it wasn't in focus, it felt blurred, but then I soon realized it was myself just when I was trying to do it handheld like this, it's heavy. So it's just something to bear in mind. If you do have this lens and you're finding you've got a blurred image or something, just maybe put it on a tripod or just test it in other ways first before you think it's the lens because that's what I did and I was like, mm, it's just me and my, wobbliness and giddiness <laughs> when I'm taking pictures. So yes, the image quality is beautiful. It has been amazing. I've got some stunning shots I can share with you and footage, which I'm just so pleased with. Even at f-stop 2, that wide aperture, you've still got sharp, crisp images and that's what you want. It's beautiful. And I hope to borrow this lens more in summer where I can get some really low light pictures of just scenic stuff or animals or anything just because I feel like it really give lovely images. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased with the image quality of this lens for both filming and for photography. <laughs> it's been wonderful. I can't really say more than that. It's just beautiful. It really is beautiful. And this is why I've always loved prime lenses. It's that finesse you get from a prime that you cannot get in a zoom lens. I've said it, don't shout at me. It's just my opinion. <laughs> and I notice a difference when I shoot with primes. I love prime lenses and it's expanded into this giant prime that I also love how this prime finishes things off as well. It's beautiful. It really is. So yeah, image quality. I was blown away. It's stunning. Well worth it. It's amazing. Okay. So the next point I'm going to talk about is filming because that's something I have really been getting into recently is more filming. I love filming. If you've been on my YouTube, you'll know it's a big part of what I do. Never thought it would be. It's just transpired into this like canvas of art of beauty. I love it. I love filming. So when I got to test filming with the 200 millimeter, I was like, oh, how's it going to perform? And oh, it is so good. It is so beautiful. But I got a lot of footage of the bears when I was away in slow motion. The clarity is beautiful. It's so nice. It's lovely. And yeah, I just love filming with it. I think it's great that you've got the capability of the f-stop to the look and that final image is just really, really beautiful. And it's just got really sunny outside. <laughs> Sorry, I got me distracted then. And I did a mixture of filming in 4K, 6.2K and 8K, both on the X-H2 and the X-H2S just to mix it up a bit. And it performed great on all of them. I was pleasantly surprised and thoroughly surprised I don't know why I was surprised, I just was, and it was so nice. And I have to say, the only difficulty is handheld filming. It's not really achievable unless you shoot in high speed recording, as I've done a lot of them in five times slower, because it's quite heavy and weighty. So any slight movement with a telephoto lens is exaggerated on your subject. That's just how they work. They're always exaggerated. Handheld photography has been fine, but filming was just, it was just really tricky, um, but I have used a gimbal head, tripod head mount. I think that's what they're called. Anyway, it's attached to my tripod now and I use that in the wildlife hides and that works fantastic. And that was 50 pounds. So I think if you are looking at filming or doing more stability in your photography with a telephoto lens, not just this one, I would highly recommend using a gimbal head tripod mount thing. And once I stuck the 200 millimeter to that, it worked fine, it was dream, it was like butter and it was perfect. And I'll give you examples all of this, but filming was brilliant, it was crisp, clear, sharp and beautiful. I can't say much more than that. <laughs> it was amazing, but enjoy the footage anyway. 
and you'll see what I mean, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about autofocus. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I tested the 200 millimeter with both my X-H2S Fujifilm and the Fujifilm X-H2. I wanted to give you a good balance between the two of them. I don't own an X-T5 or anything like that, so I'm sorry, X-H2S and X-H2 are just what I got to test it with. And they both performed great. And actually with clarity wise, I couldn't tell sometimes the difference between the two until it was a bit closer, maybe with the bears, I could see the difference with the X-H2. It just has that little bit more refinement, and I think it's a megapixel, 40 megapixel, whatever it is, sensor, really helps with that. And yes, yeah, so that's the main difference I found. And when it comes to the autofocus on both of these camera bodies as well, it was fantastic. I've got loads of shots to show you, loads of footage, where it was brilliant. I think the only time it struggled with the lens was small birds far away, so like blue tits, um, finch, bullfinch, stuff like that, very small birds, and I've noticed that before with my X-H2S and the X-H2, tiny, tiny, teeny like nuthatch birds, it struggles to know where the eye is, and also with the brown bears, the cubs were like fuzzy balls of fur, and the camera was like, ah, I don't know which way's face or end, so it didn't know where to focus on which I get because sometimes they just look like a ball of fluff. So it wasn't necessarily an identifiable object and I think that's when the camera can struggle. If it's something that's unidentifiable, it's not like that doesn't look like a mammal or that doesn't look like a bird, that's when it struggles. But apart from that, they did great, both cameras with the lens and I've got, yeah, as I've said, lots of examples to show you. I tested it with bears, with my dog, just with normal stuff, with some sheep in a field, just to see how it went. Just a mixture of things, as much as I could in the time that I had it, and it performed great. And the positive as well about this lens is it's so quiet. And when I was sat in the wildlife hide, we had to be silent, and it was a forest where it was like, you could hear a pin drop. There was like no noise at all. And the lens was so quiet. At autofocus, it didn't go, it was just like, you didn't hear it. It was smooth, quiet, perfect. And even adjusting things like the focus ring, silent aperture, little click. But again, you can like make that make not a lot of noise. But the only time it did make a noise was when I first turned on my camera and it like kind of would load up and it'd be like, and I was like, oh, that's gonna scare some bears. But luckily it didn't, the bears didn't hear it, which is fine. I think it's just when it was pin silent, it makes everything seem exaggerated like the noises uh, but yeah it was fine it was good okay that just leaves me to summarize my experience of the fujifilm telephoto prime 200 millimeter great white sharp lens <laughs> and i have to say i've thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it as i've mentioned I've wanted to use this lens for years. Like I saw it many moons ago and I was just was like, I want to try that lens. And to finally try it has just been 
a dream come true, it really has, and I know I've said this, but it's true. I love its dreaminess, its vibe, its bokeh, and it's a prime, I love primes, and I knew this was gonna happen when I used this lens that I would fall in love with it, and yes, but there is a big but, as always, the but is the price tag. I personally can't afford to buy a lens like this just outright. It's been brilliant being able to use it and borrow it from Fujifilm, and I've adored every minute with it. But the price tag, yeah, it is pretty hefty. But I think it's something that actually reflects the market of prime telephoto lenses, and actually a lot of them are double or triple the price. So if you're thinking it in that respect, it isn't expensive compared to other telephoto primes. But when you're looking at it as like an individual like myself, looking at buying something, I'm like, whoa, that's like the price of a car. It's expensive. So <laughs> it depends how you view it. But if it's something you really want to do or like for a profession or I don't know, you've got the spare change to get it, then why not? I think it's brilliant. If I had all the money in the world, I'd buy it. I love it. I think it's great but I don't have all the money in the world. But it's been a fantastic time using this lens. It's been brilliant, it really has. So yes, it is expensive and it is a bit heavy, but you get what you pay for. You get quality, you get sharpness, beautiful crisp images. And actually when I look at my pictures now from, I don't know, even like a year ago, I feel like it's a massive step up professionally. I feel like they were a professionally graded level of pictures in my opinion, <laughs> maybe not to you, but to me it felt like that. So it was really nice to see that improvement in not just my photography and my filming as well. And if that's what you're after, that finesse and that lovely finish and that beautiful soft background with the compression, I think the, 200 millimeter is brilliant, it really is. And yeah, if Fuji said I could have this today, I'd cherish it like it was my child. So yes, I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you found it fun. I hope you found it interesting. If you own this lens, I'd love to know your thoughts on it. If you would like to own this lens, I would like to know your thoughts on it. And yeah, just anything else, add it below. And any questions, add it below as well. Yeah, until next time, stay you, stay awesome. Stay wild and stay free. <laughs> and until next time, you amazing people, goodbye for now. Bye. I think this sounds all right. La. Yeah, we're good, we're fine. So Eric is here, he's just being lazy and he keeps collapsing. He has this habit where he just likes to collapse. <sighs> But when it comes to autofocus, you've got them if you want them. Don't collapse. Don't do an Eric. This side, this side, other side, other side, stop wrestling me. But Eric, no, he's not moving. Eric, he doesn't care about me anymore. Having a belly rub because he loves being squished, squishy. Is there anything you want to say? Loving you is easy cause you're beautiful. Oh, bye.